Hey guys, Dituboy here, and this is how Fear and Arteezy, Dota's favorite family, fight with Lifestealer. A lot of lower level players don't know that, but offlane Abaddon is really really strong. In this video though, he commits one of the mortal and actually most common mistakes offlane Abaddons make. He used shield right in front of everyone at a very low level, without purging any debuffs. So what that means is that there's at least a 10 second window until the next shield. The damage he's going to prevent with that shield is not even close to what they can provide, and they quickly kill Abaddon. Just a few seconds later though, Radiant makes the most common mistake safe lanes do against offlane Abaddon. It starts great, Lion has the right idea. He stuns Abaddon and Arteezy doesn't want to use the slow, because Abba will purge it off. The right move here would be either Coddle or Arteezy using one of their slows, making Abaddon choose to purge one of them, and then they would follow up with the next one. Unfortunately, since Lion blocked Coddle, they end up casting both skills at once, and that's exactly what Abaddon wanted. Arteezy ends up in a terrible situation and dies. Lion has the right idea again. Abba is really good against slows and debuffs, but not against stuns. Abaddon was even cutting trees to prevent that from happening, but Lion was too fast, and they kill Abba. Fortunately, Pudge ends up hooking Arteezy, and I want to point out something he does here that I know a lot of people will do differently. There's a cap on how much you can slow someone. It is 100 move speed. Hex reduces a target move speed to 100 besides the move speed bonus the target has, so using slow right now is definitely not the right idea. Also, since Lifestealer slows a lot in the beginning, and then it reduces, it would be a terrible idea to do that. And while it might seem like it didn't make a difference, it's good knowledge to have. In this clip Lifestealer gets recalled by Kotto, and a lot of crazy stuff happens. Spirit Breaker ends up TPing to the lane instead of charging, which means that he has charge to disengage from open wounds. But unfortunately for him, Kotto casted Mana Leak, and they get the kill. I feel like he misplayed here though. They are chasing Bloodseeker and when he casts the Silence, a good idea would be to turn Armlet on, to lose less HP percentage and then try to TP as fast as possible. I feel like he thought since he, has, since he was so low HP, someone could stun or kill him with the vision from Bloodseeker. And, and then he would not only die but lose the TP cooldown as well. And he indeed gets hooked, so maybe that was the right play, even though at first it doesn't seem like it. Lifestealer is a hero that gets easily kited and has a problem staying on top of heroes, especially against Abaddon, Spirit Breaker and Bloodseeker. That's not the case for OD though. Check how he takes a look on OD's inventory to see if he has a 4 staff already. He doesn't. Also, since he used Astro just a few seconds before, he wanted to abuse the cooldown, which was probably up already, but maybe OD was trying to buy items before dying, so he didn't even bother using Astro. This is a very good bait by Arteezy, he's farming Ancients and sees just a glimpse of Pudge there. Usually, people will try to either run away or immediately chase him, which would be obvious for Pudge since he has a ward there, and he would retreat. Enrage has an instant cast animation, which means that if you're spamming your Q when you get hooked, you will always be able to use Enrage before he dismembers you, which gives him an easy Q. <laughs> This clip is similar in concept. Pudge hooks Arteezy, and this time, even though he had no idea Pudge was there, he is still able to use Rage, and with a timely stun from Lion, they easily kill Pudge again. One thing to note is that after OD's Astro, instead of being out in the open and exposing himself, he goes to a safer place, he even cuts a tree to have vision of Pudge, and easily gets the kill later. A very important part of playing Lifestealer is having teammates for in fast ganks. A good tip to facilitate your playing is to infest with armlet turn it on. You won't lose HP while you're inside and when you leave your ally, you facilitate your playing a lot, it's just one less key to press. Not only you have less buttons to press when engaging, it can also help you in those cases you get stunned right as you go out of infest. Having the extra HP during the stun time can help save you, especially now that the armlet bonus doesn't add in instantly. Lifestealer is a very straightforward hero. The best things to keep an eye on is the downtime of Enrage and also when to use open wounds. Check how again he doesn't bother using open wounds. Spirit Breaker is stunned and he doesn't even bother using it. If another hero showed up, he would be able to slow him and maybe get an extra kill. 
After taking the tower, he does something very very smart and that a lot of people don't know. Pudge keeps the TP going, but he loses the normal vision of the tower. Making it possible for Arteezy to trick him, Pudge probably thought he was retreating. But remember though, Pudge does have a little bit of vision around where he is TPing, but way less than what the tower provides. So if Arteezy just stood still, waiting for Pudge to come, he would definitely cancel the TP. And that doesn't happen here. This clip has nothing relevant gameplay-wise going on, except what he does at the end. Yeah, they are ganking with Infest again, and they secure a kill. But sometimes when you spend so much time waiting for a kill like that, and you manage to get one, it can be a good idea, if you already have the cooldown like happened here, to do it again. It's less likely that the enemy team will expect it. So you can even bait Lion alone in a lane instead of looking aggressively for a gank. This clip might look completely ordinary, but there are tons and tons of more things he does here that are important. So the first thing is that when Lion blinks in and stuns, he doesn't bother using open wounds or face boots. And it might seem completely irrelevant, but keep going, he only uses open wounds when Kotal actually pushes OD away. OD has BKB. So if Lifestealer phase duration was over by that point, would he reach OD and get that kill? I don't know, but it was definitely close when he used phase, so without it, it could make a difference. As the fight drags on, you can see that he is not spamming open wounds or enrage. Only when Bloodseeker uses his silence, he uses enrage, and since Spirit Breaker was dead, he saves open wounds for the next target. Arteezy dies, but the fight was definitely on your favor. This footage is too complicated to be analyzed, if I have to be honest. Even though Arteezy has Orchid to disallow Abaddon to ult and disjoint stuns and slows, it wouldn't really matter unless he and Lion timed everything perfectly. So I think he wants to force the ult, giving up the least amount of cooldowns possible. After he commits the ult, he uses the slow, but at the same time he gets apprehensive to go against OD. Check how he only uses Orchid after Enrage, or else he would also get silenced. Even though Spirit Breaker runs away, he gets Abaddon. This is a very cheeky play by Fear. He TPs to the lane and he tries to infest a creep and surprise Anti-Mage. The best case scenario here is Anti-Mage blinking back to the lane, allowing Fear to kill him. Even though that doesn't happen, when he goes for AM, he panics and blinks in the worst place possible, guaranteeing the kill. Something to note is that he only pops Enrage when getting close to hit Anti-Mage, maximizing his total possible DPS. As they chase Oracle, check how he doesn't use open wounds immediately. Oracle can easily purge it off. Not stuns though. Just a few moments later, he finds three enemy heroes. As he forces false promise, the only sane thing to do is TP while he has enraged duration. He knows Enigma used black hole at 11 minutes, and since the duration is 200 seconds, he's fine. During these types of engagements, a lot of people simply decide to go farm or to defend a tower, failing to realize that not only black hole is still not available, but false promise as well. So what he does? Go stop to try to kill AM? an impossible task, or make use of the opportunity he himself created. They get a huge jump, and even though Enigma just got black hole in that time frame, Windranger and Venge cancel it very fast. Also check out he doesn't use open wounds when it's not needed. I talked a lot about saving it to the next target, but Lifestealer struggles with mana especially if you don't go Echo Saber. In this clip Fear baits False Promise because he saw that Oracle used his first skill just a little bit before. So even though Oracle runs away, baiting that skill is very valuable, especially after the cooldown increase at level 1. This game is a terrible game for Lifestealer, if you consider that two of the enemy cores have blinks. 
but at the same time Free has a lot of good heroes to infest gank with. Storm and Slardar being the main ones. Slardar plays this to perfection. Oracle is definitely the kill they want. He doesn't even bother using open wounds since it will reduce his overall DPS. He uses it on X though. In this footage Oracle falls promises and uses Fortune's End, leaving no counterplay to open wounds. As he chases X, he has a huge foresight. He has Enrage and Phase Boots on cooldown, so he knows X will be able to blink away and Fear will just lose time, so he doesn't even try to go after X and use open wounds, even though he would have a cooldown. Instead, he turns to Anti-Mage, but a very well-timed Yule Scepter saves AM and Quap. When the dust settles, he infests Storm and they, and they snipe X from very, very far away. For the last time, he saves open wounds since Storm has a disable. I've been talking a lot about saving open wounds, and not only you want to save it because your ally has another stun, but since the slow decreases over time, you usually want to cast the slow when the disable has completely ended. Same story, they initiate with Slarder that provides stun, they explode X, Quop has Lincolns and Blink, so he refrains from using it. Only after Venja swap, he slows Enigma, guaranteeing the kill. Also, check out he doesn't use phase boots right away when going for X, only when he starts right clicking Quop when he needs to chase. This clip is pretty funny, he infests Storm and Fear was afraid of the counter initiation from X, so he doesn't immediately leave. Unfortunately, since Oracle starts healing Enigma, he feels like Storm needs help, and then X immediately counter initiates, like Fear was expecting. Pretty good play from Radiant. Unfortunately for them, Fear knows they don't have Black Hole and knows that all of Oracle's counter play is over and he can easily dive their base. But Fear gets ridiculously unlucky. His Aegis expires during the dive and all of his teammates are too far away to help. Well, this wraps up for today. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything you didn't know before, please guys, give it a thumbs up, it helps a lot. If you want to see more of Artesi and Fear's Lifestealer breakdowns, please check the link in the description. If you use the coupon code D2Bowie, you will get one month of Pugna for free. And I can't overstate how this video wouldn't ever be possible without the huge help from the Pugna guys, so please show them some love. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe to it, I'm making videos like this almost every day, and I'm sure something here will spark your interest. Bye. I want to commit BKB against Spike Carapace, and they do get the kill eventually. This, and a lot of the next clips I am going to show have a similar aspect to them, I'm actually going to repeat myself a lot. A lot of people like to use Metamorphosis as soon as a fight starts, and you will see time and